Hey there, just a quick vid to show you how to do a super awesome indirect evap cooling unit, which is two of my projects, the AC box fan air cooler and the blue cube evap cooler. There it is, 72. Yep, staying nice and cool. Hey there, this is just a quick vid to show you how just combining two of my projects either one of the box fan AC air coolers or one of the table or smaller fan versions along with the blue cube evap cooler and you can make an awesome indirect evap cooling system indirect meaning that you're siphoning off the water not using the humid air and just pumping cold water through the fan radiators and creating cool dry air probably the first and most important thing about the whole setup is to understand that these EVAP air coolers not only produce the cool air, but they also are super water chillers. They, they can chill like 12 gallons of water like in that tub from 100 Fahrenheit down to 60 in like 5 minutes. So that's the secondary effect of them and that's what we're interested in. We don't so much care about the air coming out the top. For now we're just going to exhaust that out into space. What we need though to run the box fan AC air cooler effectively is cold water. This is going to be our cold water source. The way those work is they just need a cold water source to pump through the radiator to cool off the fins and then you pull the room air through the fins, the fan does, and it blasts out the cooler air. You have to kind of press on it and then you can see it drip out. Beautiful. All right, now let's fire up the second pump. Check it out. That's the air getting pushed through. Awesome. 64, 65, 18.6, 19.2. 63, 61, 16 Celsius, 61. What are we getting out of here? 72, 73, and that's a full box fan right now. Probably pushing a thousand CFM. I think they're about a thousand on low. It's crazy. You can't hear it because of that fan, but just for the record, of course, this is outside and you're just blowing that off into space, the humid air and then this would be inside. All you gotta do is run these two thin tubes from outside to inside. Fifty-eight, solid fifty-eight, or just under fifteen Celsius. Fourteen, fifteen Celsius, fifty-eight Fahrenheit. Again, it's probably like eighty-three out here, something like that, Fahrenheit.
probably even be a little colder than that because when you think about it, you can, you can block the sun from hitting the pipes. That's probably solar heating the water a little bit. And then this metal radiator and the sun, remember this whole thing's gonna be inside and this will be outside. So we'll probably get some cooling just by blocking the, uh, blocking the tubes. And of course, this won't be in the sun when it's in your house. By the way, if you don't want to use a full box fan with this, you can tap into this with any of my smaller ones too. You know, the ones I made like this with the smaller like table fans and stuff. You could probably tap into this thing, two of these, and maybe two smaller units, like a third that size for table fans. I bet you could do two to four in here and the water temperature wouldn't change. It'd stay the same, see? It's been like an hour now, still 64, 17, eight. It's not changing. It's going up and down a little, but that's just with humidity fluctuations in the ambient air. By the way, it's not as noisy as it sounds. It's just that one fan that's going to be outside anyway on the top. The mics on the camera on the camera are right on the front, so it sounds loud as hell, but You can see it creates almost a vortex. To put this whole thing together, all you got to do is make two of my projects. The 20-inch box fan AC air cooler with the radiators and the Blue Cube EVAP air cooler. Then to actually set it up for practical use, you just put this outside like a window or a door, run the tubes in, and put the fan inside somewhere. You don't need to vent it at all. You don't need to do anything. All the heat is removed through the radiator and pumped back into the, the tub. Whereby these, with all the water going down it, just recools that warm water back to being cold. And these tiny little tubes, the return tube, won't even overpower one of those pads with all the cold water constantly pouring off the bottom. You could probably run two or three fan setups and not even put a dent in the cold water in the bottom. So they're totally awesome. By the way, the reason these things chill the water in the tub so fast is because 99% of it that runs down the pad doesn't evaporate with each pass. Only about 1% of the air that gets pulled through evaporates the water to make the cool air. The rest of it just goes back down to the tub. So most of it is just being cycled around and around. And even with one pass, the water is super cool at the bottom of the pad and it just pours off. So within minutes, I can put 100 degree Fahrenheit water in there and within 5 minutes it's down to 60 or 65 degree water. And then it just holds steady. So it's pretty cool, literally. And then of course, pretty self-explanatory on the box fan AC air cooler. You just pump any source of cold water through the radiator. Fins get cold and then you pull the room air through and it cools off the air.
Got the 250 watts, it's running 280 watt fans and 220 watt pumps. Total of 200 watts, but I wanted a little extra for the amps. We got the cold air coming out there. We got the water circulating through the tubes. If you look carefully, you can see a few air bubbles. Sorry, I'm blocking the solar panels, so it'll slow down. Okay, and there's your unit temps, about 60. 15.6 Celsius, 59, 15 Celsius. It's almost hard to believe, but even that fan on low pushes 1100 CFM and your standard 5 or 6000 BTU window unit for cooling a room, they're only like 200 or 250. So this thing is probably like four times stronger, four times the air volume. It may be two, three, four degrees higher on average in the temperature coming out of it, not much, but with the two to four times the airflow, um, I have a feeling it would actually cool a room down faster in the right humidity temperature conditions it would cool a room down as much as twice as fast as a regular air conditioner and again in those quote right temperatures you're not going to need to remove humidity so it's essentially acting exactly like an air conditioner would in terms of how the air feels so that's really something to consider with these like where I live anywhere in the desert southwest or even this half of the country um, these things are extremely comparable to AC units the only real drawback, and it's only a kind of minor thing, is that you have to get used to it putting out 62 degree air, 10 minutes later 68 degree air, 2 minutes later 64, 10 minutes later 72. It fluctuates up and down with the small changes in temperature and humidity throughout the day. So it's always putting out cool air, but sometimes it's just kind of cool, sometimes it's super cool. Whereas a regular AC unit, they're pretty much solid. Once they get the room cool, they just keep it there no matter what's going on outside. But that's one difference. So I think that's one of the big reasons why they've never really caught on. That, and if all of a sudden the humidity spikes, they don't work very well. So people like the consistency of the compressor-based AC. They're willing to pay 10 times more. There's been a couple of companies that have made systems Nothing like the way this looks, but same general idea. They put it into one unit usually. And uh, they don't ever seem to catch on, though. I don't know. The only thing I can figure, again, is just that you get those small temperature fluctuations. And then if you get a couple days where it's like raining or something, even when it's like in a desert, you still can get humidity levels 70 to 90%. And then this thing's not going to cool you off. So you got that as a drawback, but otherwise, it's an awesome way to cool. Making this, by the way, is super simple. It's not hard at all. You just buy two of these. They're actually Hayden 405 model. Um, they're called transmission coolers. And I just basically zip tied them on, put some styrofoam blocks in there to offset it, and then zip tied it on in select places. And then you just push to fit tubing with clamps all around there, in there, out there. I use seven feet. We were going to a bucket with ice water, but let's just get the cold water from this. That's all you really have to do. Then it's indirect evap cooling. So just a quick recap on how these work. You put the water in the bottom of the tub. There's a pump in the bottom that pumps water up the frame and all the way around the top rails. Those have small holes in the top and it shoots water down these evap cooling pads so they get completely saturated. Then you flip the fan on and what happens is it sucks the air through all four pads equally up and out. That creates the cool humid air right here. At that point you're set if you just want to do direct evap cooling and use this air inside. But then you got a vent and all this other stuff and the air is humid. 
If you want to turn it into what they call indirect, you just add one of these box fan air coolers with the radiator. Those are cold water powered. The way those work is they just need a cold water source to pump through the radiator to cool off the fins and then you pull the room air through the fins, the fan does, and it blasts out the cooler air. Bottom line, if you've got the dry or semi-dry air, you can crank out the cool air all day basically with just water. No ice or nothing.